What's up guys and gals, it's the Tyrant here and welcome back to my weekly Q&A session where you guys ask the questions and I give you the answers. I'll be keeping it a little bit short this week because if you can't already tell from the title of this video, I have a lot to discuss at the end of it. And for those of you who want to jump right to it, I am inserting an ad right before the questions so that you can jump right to it if you want to. Before we go too far into this, I also want to just remind you guys that in the coming weeks, I will be moving the Q&A from Saturday to Friday. So if you can submit your questions no later than Thursday, that would help me out a lot and make this transition go a little bit more smoothly. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. For those of you who want to know how to submit questions to the Q&A, you can do it one of three ways. You can either submit your question in the comment section below, you can submit it to me on Twitter, or if you are a patron donor, which would mean you have access to our uh, Discord. You can also ask it in there as well. We have a special place in there for you to ask your Q&A questions. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our first question of the week comes from Maximum Rage Quit. And Maximum Rage Quit asks, do you think the success of Halo Online's gameplay, art style, and forge will have any impact on Halo 6? My guess is probably not. And the reason I say that is because I don't see them drastically changing their art style or gameplay for that matter unless they're uh, doing a classic Halo title. So if they're planning on taking this series back after the Reclaimer Saga, I can see that uh, being a thing. But otherwise, probably not. In terms of the Forge, the Forge in Halo Online was pretty good, uh, but Halo, Halo 5 is fantastic. So I'd prefer to see the Forge from Halo 5 make its way to Halo 6. So I hope that answers your question, Max and Rage. Quick, good to see you here, my friend. Our next question comes from Halic. And Halic asks, Q&A, have you heard of the Halo Genesis rumors saying that there may be a Halo reboot at E3 this year? What would you think if this were to happen? How would you picture a Halo reboot? I've, I've heard bits and pieces, but not a lot of details. And I'm personally hoping that this is not the case, at least not until the current saga is wrapped up, as I sort of uh, talked about in the previous question. You know, they already have a saga. I think they should, you know, wrap that up first. And then if they want to go back, that's fine. I don't really know how they would reboot a Halo game and have the community side with it because you already hear about how people miss the classic gameplay and just miss that saga of Halo entirely. I can understand why they would, you know, consider going in this direction, but I wouldn't want to cloud the success of the original Halo games on top of that. I always had this thing pictured, though, that of Halo 1 being remade with the Halo 3 engine and graphics. I think that would be pretty kick-ass. I could certainly see something like that happening, but I would still try to stick to the original styles, or at least of the Bungie era. So uh, I hope that answers your question. I don't know a lot about Halo Genesis, but if it is true, I'm sure we'll hear about it in the months to come. Our next question comes from Mark Rose, and Mark Rose asks, Q&A, do you think rec packs could be used for Halo 6 for just vehicles, weapons, boost for Warzone, but not armor? I certainly hope so. Uh, one of the things that has been mentioned a lot over the, over the uh, course of Halo 5 is that people are really disappointed that the armor is something that they only get by chance in rec packs, and I actually agree that the reach system for armor was really good, where you could earn credits by playing campaign missions, by completing multiplayer missions, uh, by winning multiplayer matches, and then you could save those credits to buy the armor pieces that you want. And I think that should make a return for Halo 6. You know, I've been trying to get the Helljumper helmet forever in Halo 5, and again, it's just by chance. I just recently got the certification for the anti-air raid, something I've been waiting for for quite a while now. And so I think it would be cool for not just be, uh, armor, but also for certification so that you could save up to get something that you really, really would love to use for Warzone. And I also do think that rec packs should stay uh, exclusive to Warzone and not make their way into the mainstream. So that's my opinion, but what do you guys think in the comments below? Are you okay with rec packs as long as A, you don't have to buy them, and B, they only contain weapons, weapons variants, and the same with vehicles in Warzone? Let me know in the comments below. Our next question comes from Gospel Ghost, and Gospel Ghost asks, Q&A Tyrant, do you think the Banish should be in Halo 6 since the Covenant is basically dead at this point? Maybe even a boss battle against Atriox or a member of his Chain of Command? Yeah, I, I've said in previous videos that I think that would be a great idea. They've already alluded that Halo Wars 2 will be connected to Halo 6, and since the Covenant was essentially defeated by the end of Halo 5, it would make a lot of sense. Some others have made the uh, rebuttal that 
the remaining Covenant will, will join Cortana, and she sort of alludes to that at the end of Halo 5, but again, I imagine the Covenant remnants are small, if any, at this point, and the Banish would be a much better replacement, so I hope so, and I guess we'll see when Halo 6 comes out. Our next question comes from King Shockey 18 and King Shockey asks, Mythic Tyrant, hey, can I get an answer in this week's Q&A? Uh, uh, two questions, you pick which one. Which one should come out first, Halo 3 or Halo 3 Anniversary or Halo 6? Uh, Halo 6. As I already said in this video, I believe that they should finish up the Reclaimer Saga before concentrating on any other Halo product. I've mentioned this before, too. I think one of the big setbacks to Halo 5 is they released so much between Halo 4 and Halo 5. You had Spartan Assault, Spartan Strike, the Master Chief Collection, various other medias relating to Halo, and I think that hurt Halo 5. So I'd like to see them concentrate solely on Halo 6 at this point, and then if they want to focus on a Halo 3 anniversary, that would be cool with me. So I hope that answers your question, King Shockey. It's good to hear from you, my friend. Our next question comes from Seafunk99, and Seafunk99 asks, Q&A, if Halo 6 fails, does the Halo Harvest game and, and the Master Chief Collection on PC, if, if it works, of course, still have a chance? Well, it's a possibility. I mean, if Halo 6 goes in the direction of enhanced movement abilities and so forth, just like Halo 5, uh, having a return to form could certainly work. But I think that if Halo 6 is a complete and utter failure, which I hope it's not, I don't believe it's going to be, which is why I think they're taking so long to make it, that it, that, that would be pretty much a clue for them to start dialing it back a little bit and start looking at the older games and trying to model future titles after some of that classic content. So it's, it's possible that those games would still do fine, but I hope Halo 6 knocks it out of the park, and I hope you hope that too. And our final question of the week, our star question, probably the quickest we've ever gotten to this, is Nebulous Cheetah. Nebulous Cheetah asks, Q&A, why is Microsoft being so hard on Halo Online? They completely removed the download links from El Dorito and even went after streamers and videos with Halo Online content in them. Is there a method to this madness? So the reason why I kept this Q&A short is because I'm going to answer this question in multiple parts. Because really, this is a long answer that needs to be discussed in detail. I've already posted two videos this week regarding Halo Online. Uh, I've been fortunate so far, fingers crossed, that they haven't been taken down yet. And, and I hope they don't, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. The thing you have to remember about Halo Online and the, the current release are a couple of things. First of all... The fact that Microsoft took action on it is nothing new. The reason why they did is because Halo Online uses assets and the IP that was developed by Microsoft. It belongs to Microsoft. This differs from other projects like Installation Zero One where that team is creating everything on their own from the ground up and they're not using the Halo IP for it. It is, for all intents and purposes, a Halo spinoff game, but they're not even using the, uh, the word Halo in the title. You know, so this is something that 343 is openly supported. And as far as I know, 343 is fine with El Dorito as well, but Microsoft is their overhead here, and so it's Microsoft taking action. So again, I want to remind folks, do not pin this on 343. This is Microsoft's doing. And even then, Microsoft does have the right to do it. Because Halo Online was taken offline, well, you know what I mean. They, basically, all, download, or all official download links were removed is because it's Microsoft's property. So it stands to reason that this would happen again uh, because it's really no different. They used different assets this time, but they still belong to Microsoft. Basically, they used Halo 3 instead of Halo 4. I think a common misconception is that Halo Online, a game that was designed or at least was going to be tested in the Russian market, was canceled when really it was just put on an indefinite hiatus. Essentially, this was meant to be a test game. And for all we know, it could be a test game uh, for a game that could be set up after Halo 6. Maybe a game that could be equally competitive to Counter-Strike. And I even said in this, uh, this past week that I believe that if Halo Online became a full-fledged reality and something that was released by Microsoft, if done correctly and put on Steam, it could serve as a direct competitor to Counter-Strike. And so it doesn't really surprise me that this, this, uh, this takedown happened again. I kind of wish the El Dorito community had been a bit more transparent about this. Again, they created an awesome product, but I think they should have also been a little bit more forthcoming with the people that were going to download it, saying, 
you know this is technically still a microsoft property we just changed things up a bit you might want to keep the publicity to a minimum understand that this can also be taken down in the future based on what we've had to experience in the past so i would have that's something that i would have hoped for but hindsight's always 2020 20, right at the same time i do believe that microsoft took this a step too far when they started flagging both streamers and from what i understand also some youtube content creators basically it's pouring a lot of salt on an already very open wound and the halo community really isn't in a position right now where microsoft should be dishing out a lot of negative pr they're already sort of in a tight spot halo is currently experiencing what i would consider and what many other people would consider to be a dead zone there's no new information coming out Halo 3 has now been out for almost three years, and we know nothing about the major title in the series. If you were to go back to the earlier days of Halo when we were at a three-year cycle for these games, right now, in the current cycle, we would have already had an announcement trailer. We would have had uh, probably some screenshots, some gameplay, and probably some vid -ox. And this is to help sort of just sweeten the deal for the next major Halo title, make the people of the Halo community excited for this title. But we haven't had any of that. And as far as we know, Halo 6 doesn't even exist right now. We've had no information. We've had two small tidbits of information dropped within the last year. One was that they were going to include split screen in all future Halo titles, and or at least major AAA titles. And the next one was that Master Chief would be the center focus of the next major title. So that's it, but it still doesn't really say anything about Halo 6. Halo Wars 2 came out a little over a year ago, and while I personally loved the game, and many other people did too, most people still consider it a side Halo title. It's not a member of the major AAA series. It's not even a first-person shooter. It's an RTS. So people see it as sort of a side title to help keep you busy until the next major Halo installment is released. Very similar to how I view Halo Spartan Assault and Halo Spartan Strike. Not everyone who plays first-person shooters likes the concept of real-time strategy games or top-down shooters for, you know, for all intents and purposes. And so it doesn't surprise me that El Dorito got this much attention because there's nothing else right, right now to focus on at all. And I understand why Microsoft dealt with El Dorito the way they did, but at the same time, when you're starting to fault content creators, you're really overstepping your boundaries. I get why. I get that, you know, the, the assets were attained illegally and basically content creators are showcasing this, this product, but at the same time, this is just content creation. I've seen videos about there about Halo Mega Blocks and that never made it to the market, but that seems okay. And, and so faulting content creators is just pu putting more salt in an already very open wound, which I've already said, but I feel like it should be reiterated. This is not the way to go. One thing that they've made perfectly clear on the site is that they're currently talking to YouTube and Twitch to get these bans removed, to get these copyright strikes removed, or any sort of negative strike in general, which I think is a very positive step, and I hope to see this continue. I don't want to see more content or content creators having or being punished for wanting to post content in an era where there is no other content to publish. One thing that still concerns me, though, is that in the same post, they said, well, but, you know, this, this still may not go unpunished. You may not be able to get into uh, Halo Insider programs in the future if you decide to post content like this, especially in some, since some of this content was posted pre-takedown of El Dorito. And so, to that end, I think Microsoft really just needs to take a step back, cool their jets on that one. I get it's a publicly shared company. I get that they have to consider their shareholders as well. But if you're going to start shunning content creators, that's only going to further encourage them to isolate themselves from the Halo community and your future products. And considering the way we left things with Halo 5, Considering that a lot of people aren't fans with the movement system, the campaign had a lot of mixed reviews and ended with a cliffhanger, this is not a place where Microsoft really wants to find itself right now. And I hope this is something they'll consider going forward. At the very least, leave the content creators alone. 
And to sort of bring this home a little bit further, I want to start talking a little bit about the video I posted on Wednesday, which talked about uh, Halo Online being taken down, or at least the project being taken down, because I got a little bit of backlash from that. Not a lot. If you look at the likes versus dislikes, clearly most people who watched the video enjoyed it, they liked it, they walked away glad that they actually watched the video. And of course, it didn't have any Halo Online footage. I didn't want to take any risk there. Um, one of the big complaints I got was the clickbait title, quote unquote clickbait title, which really disappointed me because this is something I talked about literally just two weeks ago. And I found out I'm not the only person who's had to uh, hear about that too. I've also read about Ackman getting, you know, talking about that as well. I want to clarify that my title of Halo Online is Offline does not refer to the game itself, so to speak. It refers to the project as a whole, okay? Because the project as a whole has been thwarted, and I want to clear up a few things that seems to be uh, common misconceptions about Halo Online and what you can do with it, uh, etc. So Microsoft has made it abundantly clear that if you're someone who has already downloaded the game, they're not going to take it from you. They can't. Those are files on your computer. They're there. All right, that should be common sense. And because it is a host server based game, meaning private individuals such as yourselves host the servers, they can't really physically stop those from coming down. If they were public servers hosted by El Dorito, that's one thing, but that's not how the game works. So obviously they can't shut the game down completely. Here's what they can do and what they have done. They've specifically told El the folks at El Dorito they can no longer work on the project. They have to cease all productions on the project. They can't update it. They can't uh, do fixes for it or DLC or anything like that. They have to stop working on it entirely. They killed the Halo Online project, period. What they also said that they cannot do is distribute the product, which is why all download links have been taken down. What people seem, what one thing I noticed in my video is people tried to post links linking to other people who were hosting the file thinking that that's okay no it's not it's not just el dorito who can't supply the files it's anybody essentially if you're hosting those files it's the same thing as hosting movies for people to download instead of pay for it's in the same category you're not allowed to do it and that's why every time someone tries to post one of those links in that video i immediately delete it because i don't want anyone to be encouraged to do that. I don't want to see other people get in trouble and I don't want to see my video get in trouble from people trying to do something that they shouldn't. So uh, myth number one busted, no you cannot host these files and expect to be okay. Microsoft can still take action against you if they choose to do so. So my advice, don't do it. If you're gonna look for it, I'm not gonna recommend how to do this but I would say don't make it public that you're going to actually go this route. So that, that, that is what it is. In terms of the title itself, again, I'm just really disappointed to see that kind of backlash against it. I'm gonna post a little post up here that was uh, supplied by someone who, who watched the video. I'm gonna block out their name because I'm not gonna try to embarrass anybody. That's not what we're about here on mythictyron.com, uh, calling people out. And this person was not rude or, or anything in the least, perfectly respectful, but the summation of it essentially came down to uh, people want you to have a more specific title and a more mundane title for those who just simply want to scroll through uh, YouTube thumbnails and, and titles. And that basically sums it up for me right there. And I just want to have a little reminder to folks that YouTube is not Instagram. That's what Instagram is for. I don't spend hours working on a video so that it can simply be passed over and judged simply by the title and by the thumbnail. And that's it. Keep in mind that we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, the difference between clickbait and having an enticing title, something that makes you want to click on the video. That's content creation 101, whether you're talking about uh, books, whether you're talking about film, whether you're talking about newspaper articles, anything, you want to get people to read the story. And so you have an attractive title and a, and a picture to go with it so that people want to actually get in the depth of the story. I feel like the folks who take it too seriously in that regard and the title are the same folks that when you say happy birthday to them they say it's not my birthday it's the anniversary of my birthday or if they see someone else calling someone some other person dumb they say that person's not dumb they can speak just fine or someone who sees the movie silence of the lambs said that movie didn't have any farm animals in it in other words i've got two words for folks who take that thing too seriously lighten up okay 
it's just media it's just content creation hopefully these are videos that you enjoy but don't get so anal retentive about it that it forces you to not enjoy the the content itself and so I posted that video because I believed it was some that th those were things that needed to be said, especially since people were so happy about Halo Online having something new that was Halo related. And so to circle back around to Microsoft and El Dorito, again, I want you guys to keep in mind, I'm talking to you right now, Microsoft and 343, the reason that it picked up so much attention is because we have nothing right now regarding the next major Halo installment. My recommendation is over the next few months, try to drop some breadcrumbs for us to be able to talk about and speculate on. It doesn't have to be a full-fledged trailer. If you want to wait till E3 for that, that's fine. But say something about it. Say something like, well, we might include these game types in the next major Halo installment, or we're thinking about remaking these maps. Something, anything, even a screenshot would do it justice. Just all this dead space and silence is what fuels fan creative content like this and while I encourage fans to get creative with Halo uh, I'm hoping they continue to do this within the correct bounds and the correct um, I guess for lack of a better term through within the boundaries of what Microsoft is allowing so I know that can be complicated and long-winded Microsoft again and this goes for 3432 even though I know that you're generally with us and that you're just the messenger here but you know don't take this out on content creators and try to put more focus on Halo 6 content and trying to at least give us little bits of information to go on so that that's what we're focused on going forward. And so we can give the Halo community hope and give the Halo community something to be excited for. I feel like even still, even though you've made progress over the last year with your communication with the Halo community, at the end of the day, you're still not there yet. You're still not where Bungie was. You're still not where you were at the early days of Halo Waypoint. And I'd like to see that change, and I know you can do it. And I know it would be a very positive thing, not just for the community, but for you as well. And for Halo going forward. And I hope that's something that can be considered. So, at the end of the day, that, that's how I feel about this whole thing. I'm not going to post any more videos about Halo Online. I think I'm done at this point, but I really do want to hear your thoughts and opinions about this subject in the comments below. You know, sorry about the clickbait rant, but I just had to tag that on at the end. I do want to hear about your thoughts about El Dorito, about Halo Online, about how Microsoft is dealing with it. Is it fair? Have they taken things too far? What do you see as the silver lining here? Because the silver lining that I've seen so far is that Microsoft is getting the message how passionate people are about having a classic Halo experience on the PC, and they've acknowledged this, and we can expect to see this going forward. So I'm looking forward to that, and I want you to tell me how you feel about this and the silver lining that you see going forward. You can let me know in the comments below, or please feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at Mythic Tyrant. A link to my Twitter feed can be found in the description below. And I'd like to take the time to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your day to sit down and spend time with me watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll consider subscribing for more great content right here on MythicTyrant.com. Thank you guys and gals so much for watching. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. I'll catch you all right back here next time. And as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.